Welcome to part 5 of this video tutorial series on animation trees. In this tutorial we're going to add a simple blend that will give us a way of playing our prone animation. Then I'll be showing you how to reference and control blends programmatically to make our prone animation work. And finally we'll look at a note that I've personally found to be rather useful when handling a large number of actions in an animation tree. So we'll go ahead and open up our animation tree. And we're going to add a simple node called Anim Node Blend. This is just a uh, very basic node which blends between two inputs. So we'll hook that up as such with child1 going to our uh, movement animation uh, tree part we've got up here. And we're just going to add another new animation node, blend directional, which will be the direction that we're going to move in for our prone. And once again, in a few anim node sequences. Now, again, I've only got a um, a forward prone animation here, which is EC female prone, I believe. Prone walk, actually, it is. And I'll hook these up, even though I don't have any at the moment. And once again, as usual, you can see if we drag this anim node blend to one. You can see where we've got this animation here. We want it playing and looping, and we've got our prone forward animation getting played here. Now the other thing we'll do is rename our anim node blend. Call it prone blend because we need to name it to be able to look it up from the code properly. And just for readability, we'll rename these two to um, walking, walking and crouching. We we'll call it whatever you want, and prone, or you call it not prone and prone or something like that. Perhaps the other thing we'll do is just quickly add a uh, <coughs> UT anim blend by speed, nope, a UT anim blend by idle. Here, and we'll hook that up as well. So we can have, we can have an idle prone animation as well. And we don't actually have an idle animation, but what we'll do is just make our walk animation play really slowly. So, there we go, it's playing at a really small rate, so in game if someone's actually lying there they could, couldn't could really tell they were moving. So just a, just a cheap little way to uh, get an idle animation going there. So just a small explanation on our uh, prone blend, our basic game known blend here. As you can see down the bottom, we've only got basic settings, and the default behavior when actually going blending with this node, as you can see if we sort of move it along the way here, we're sort of half blending between idle, half blending between the prone idle, or half blending between the moving and you know, prone moving in our idle animation. Um, so by default, the full weight is not set on either child here, which means that when we actually perform, or when we update this blend from the code, we're going to want to either force it to zero, idle or one, fully prone. Once again, that's because these two are mutually exclusive actions. Generally when you're using a blend like this, um, chances are you're probably not going to be sort of floating around halfway or something like that, but you may have something in your game that calls for it. So just know that uh, when we're actually looking at the code that you can set the blend values to be whatever you like between zero and one. So what we'll do is actually check out the code that's used to update this blend. I've got it open here in Notepad. Uh, as you can see, we've got our, our prone blend declared up here via anim node blend prone blend. Um, then we actually look up this blend in the animation tree in the post init anim tree function here. Um, we just look it up anim node blend, uh, cast it to anim node blend, um, find anim node, and this function here, find anim node, takes a parameter of the name of the blend. So as you can see, we renamed ours to prone blend before. So we look up prone blend, we could call it weapon blend or whatever other blend um, you're actually going to be, be using. And here I've just made two basic uh, exec functions, enable prone and disable prone. Now the key here is the set blend target uh, function. The first parameter here is the weight of the blend. So uh, when we enable prone we're setting it all the way to 1.0 and when we're disabling prone we're setting it all the way back to zero. So as you can see, setting it to 1.0 enables our proning, setting it all the way back to zero, sets it back to idle, so 
not proned and proned. And the second parameter here um, is the amount of time that we want to take to blend uh, to this weight, to this target. So we blend from 0 to 1.0 in 0.35 of a second and then back down to 0 in 0.35 of a second when we enable and disable these. Now I will have this code um, in the supplementary material so don't have to worry about trying to pause the video and read it. Um, so you can download that along with the video tutorial. So we'll just quickly jump in game and have a look and make sure this works alright. Save our package. Jump in and I'll just go enable prone and you can see we're lying there and as we move forward we've got our prone moving animation. Disable prone, we go back to standing. And you can see that we sort of, as we enable prone, you can see that we don't instantly snap to the animation. The character kind of lies down. There's a bit of a there is the um vengeance handling the the blending between the two animations, the prone and the idle standing. So generally with the blend times I've found between sort of 0.15 and 0.35 to be ideal. You might want to make yours longer or shorter depending on the animations that you want um, and the, the speed of the blending that you want. But you can play around with those yourself to try and figure out a good balance. Now the second thing we're going to take a look at in this tutorial is a node that I found fairly useful called anim node blend by or anim node blend list. Sorry, anim node blend list. Now what this node is is a basic blend where we can have any number of inputs that we want. So if we have a certain number of actions, for instance, we might have uh, wall running, uh, rolling, any other kind of um, actions that are mutually exclusive, rather than have individual blends like this, which all need to be updated whenever something changes, we can use a list. So we can add three or four inputs here, um, rename them to, I know we might have rolling, wall running, etc, etc. And all we do is there is an option there is an option here called force child full weight oh well when become when it becomes relevant I can't remember what it's called when becoming relevant yep there we go and all this does is whenever we call the function set active child um, as you can see in in the code before here we had a function called set blend target but for the list the function to activate a child is set active child and you simply pass it the index of the child uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, um, plus, plus the blend time. And what it does is it sets the weight to the child so we don't have to sort of worry about getting an exact value down here, so 0 0.16 for child 1 and all those annoying values. So if you do have mutually exclusive actions, a number of them, um, you can just hook them up through an anim node blend list really. Uh, look up this list and then call set active child whenever you want something to change. One thing I have done with this node is created a custom version which saves the last active child and also provides a function to restore the last active child. So if you had, um, say, unarmed uh, melee combat and armed combat, uh, so you know, and you had one child here being unarmed, which had, you know, no top half blends, and a child here which was armed and had top half blends, and you wanted to sort of restore those children easily. Uh, there was a function that I added called restore last active child. Uh, so you could easily say, you know, exit a state of rolling or wall running and then jump back in to the blend that you last had. Um, so I'll, I'll provide the code for that, but uh, just something for you guys to think about when you're deciding how to structure your trees. In the tutorials I've got planned out, we don't actually really need to use this. Uh, I might a little bit down the track just to give you a demonstration of how it's used. But for the most part, it's a node that you probably just want to play with by yourself and, and see how you can get it to work. So that's all there is to this tutorial. Um, obviously, we've seen how to look up nodes from uh, from code and how to control them from code. Uh, every node is also going to have a different set of, of functions and parameters that you can have to edit. So if you're trying to sort out exactly how to work a certain node, um, you know, have a look at the code uh, the code file for it and shouldn't have too many problems. So I hope this tutorial was useful to you guys and hope you tune into the next one. Cheers.